Hey folks, how's everybody doing out there? This week, I'm going to talk about a weird outage that affected some of my websites last week, and what probably caused it. So, late Monday night, I noticed that I couldn't open DylanBT.net. I got 30 seconds of spinning, and then air connection timed out. So, uh, okay, let's run through a standard debugging process. You know, are other websites okay? Fast.com was up, Google's fine, Signal, WhatsApp, all good, all working, so it's not a connection problem. I checked it on my phone using mobile data, also down. Okay, that's kind of weird. DylanBT.net is hosted on GitHub pages, so I head over to GitHub, I check their status page, no sign of any problems there. I have a bunch of other sites on GitHub pages as well, codewithrockstar.com, ursatile.com, anystack.site, they're all down both on wired broadband and on my mobile cellular data. So next step is the genuinely delightful downforeveryoneorjustme.com. Nope, according to that, they're all fine. Okay, so this is where it's time to try something else. Now I have a spare router in my house. It's got a 4G SIM card in it. That's my failover internet in case the broadband goes out when I'm running an online workshop or something. So I switch over to Dylan's backup 4G internet and everything works. Okay, now this is where it gets weird. If you can't reach a site over broadband, but it works on your phone, then it's almost certainly a problem with your broadband, you know, network, DNS, whatever. If you can't reach a website on your broadband or on your phone, then the site's probably gone down. But I had a bunch of sites here that I could get to over one mobile network, but not over another one. I could get to them over a VPN, but not directly. I asked other people, uh, they could see them just fine, except for my partner, who lives just around the corner, and has the same internet provider as me. Now, it's late. I figure this is probably some sort of weird backbone routing problem, and it'll go away by itself, so I go to bed. Next morning, still broken, so I start digging, and I found this post on the BT forums linking to a page on spamhouse.org. Now, I haven't been able to confirm this for sure, but it looks like what happened here is that some malicious code, some malware, was uploaded to a site hosted by GitHub Pages. That site was reported to Spamhouse as malware, and Spamhouse responded by adding all of the IP addresses associated with that site to their block list, which had the unfortunate side effect of also blocking every other website hosted on GitHub Pages, which includes things like github.io itself and the official download page for the GitHub desktop client. Now, I have opinions about spamhouse.org. I'm sure the site was created by decent people with good intentions, but over the course of my career, I've had maybe half a dozen major incidents that turned out to be caused by Spamhouse. Well, actually, no, that, that's not entirely fair. Spamhouse claims to be a real-time database of IP addresses that are doing bad things. The idea is, you know, you get a, an email from an unknown IP address, or one of your users is trying to connect to a website, you can check services like Spamhouse to see if that IP address is currently reported for doing something malicious. The problem is, there doesn't really seem to be any consensus on how legitimate their authority is. Sites get compromised all the time. It's like, uh, okay, so imagine one day somebody notices one of your neighbors has got a big hole in their front garden. Yeah, it's dangerous. You know, it's deep enough somebody could hurt themselves if they fell in, and there isn't a fence around it or anything. So a well-intentioned passerby notices this, and they call the authorities. Hey, I noticed there's a dangerous hole on Wellbeck Avenue, and boom. Next thing you know, the entire street is closed off, roadblocks at both ends, nobody can get in or out of any of the houses. Now, uh, if any of you have seen my talk about email, this is exactly the kind of problem that eventually led my team to just pay someone else to deliver email for us. It wasn't that we didn't know what we were doing. We just didn't have the time to play whack-a-mole with half a dozen different spam blockers that would block us at the drop of a hat and only unblock us after 72 hours of support tickets and groveling. And when major network providers start accepting those spam block sites as definitive, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Now, you know, GitHub Pages is an awesome service. If your website doesn't actually do anything, if it's just static pages and client-side JavaScript, you can host it on GitHub's infrastructure for free. And so there are thousands of sites hosted on GitHub Pages, and all those sites share the same block of four IP addresses. Now, 
I can easily believe that there was actually malware on one of those sites. Anyone can create a GitHub account, set up a repo, and enable pages. So strictly speaking, this isn't a false positive. You know, My frustration here really is with two things. Firstly, as far as I've been able to tell, the provider that was actually blocking the traffic was BT. It's one of the UK's largest network backbone providers. Uh, my home broadband is with Plusnet, my mobile phone is with EE, and both of those companies use BT as their upstream provider, which affects why this outage affected both of those, but not my failover connection, which is on a different mobile network. And that's why stuff still worked over a VPN. But, you know, there's no way for me to talk to BT. Apparently, even my internet provider can't escalate this kind of issue to BT. That's what they told me when I, I spoke to their support team the other morning. Now, the problem was eventually fixed. I don't know who fixed it. Uh, last time I checked, the GitHub pages IP addresses were still listed as malware distribution sites on Spam House. So I'm guessing somebody at BT's network operations configured an exception or something. I don't know, it might be fixed forever it might go down again this afternoon. One thing you can pretty much guarantee, though, is that between somebody like me and the network engineers who actually know what's going on, there's about a dozen layers of impenetrable bureaucracy. Now, uh, years ago, it was back in the days of 56K dial-up modems, I had an account with a, a wonderful provider called Demon Internet. And when you phoned Demon's tech support line, the first question they'd ask you is, do you know your IP address? And if you did, you basically got straight through to second line support and you could talk to them about AT modem commands and subnet masks and stuff. And, you know, with all due respect to the people I spoke to the other morning, I do not think that me turning my router off and on again is going to resolve a problem caused by one of the UK's largest networks blocking access to GitHub based on overzealous block listing by spamhouse.org. My real frustration, though, is that there wasn't any kind of error message. And you know, maybe there's a, there's a lesson in there for all of us folks that build software. A good error message follows the four H's. Human, it's written by a person for a person. If you want machine readable error codes, put them in a header or a checksum or something. Helpful, you know, is there any information you can put in the error that might help somebody resolve it? Humble. It's your system that just fell over. You know, don't act like it's somebody else's fault that it didn't work. And some folks say that the fourth H stands for humorous, but I think the fourth H is honest. Tell people what has actually gone wrong. And a really good way to violate all four of these principles in one go is to do something on purpose that looks like a system failure. Error connection timed out after 30 seconds. That's what happens when something is broken. It should never be the result of a conscious decision by somebody to restrict or block network traffic. If I'd fired up a browser on Monday night and got a page saying, sorry, access to dylanbt.net is blocked by BT open reach right now because Spam House says a site associated with this IP address is hosting malware, I wouldn't have been happy about it, but at least that's actionable information. Folks, you all have a good week. You take it easy out there, look after each other, and I'll catch you next time.